Hello, and thank you for accessing our mini session, Top 5 Analysis Reports in 15 Minutes. This training is part of our Timely Topics Education Series, which includes education and resources designed to speak to the current business climate. I'm your host, Naomi, and I'll be going over a few quick items before we get started. Everything you see on your screen is movable and resizable using the arrows in the corners. At the bottom of your screen are multiple widgets to support today's session, and I'll highlight a few quickly now. If you have any questions about today's content, you can, consum you can submit them in the Q&A widget and we'll be sure to get back to you via email. We also have additional resources to support today's topic in the Resources widget that looks like a folder, so be sure to check that out. And finally, to help guide us on future topics, we ask that you complete a quick survey at the close of the session. You can find it in the widget that looks like a clipboard. Now that that's out of the way, I'd like to hand it off to our speaker for today's mini session, Elizabeth Bridges. Thank you, Naomi. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Bridges, and I'm the Senior Reporting Consultant with Report SAP Concur. And we're going to talk about the top five analysis reports in 15 minutes. So we want to talk about our current climate and how it's changed over the past few months. We really wanted to provide reports today that are useful and easily accessible within reporting to make your job easier. Many of us are working remotely now, so we do not have the opportunity to ask for information or a question from a colleague or someone beside you in the office. So below, we're gonna talk about a few reports today that we'd like to discuss and how they'll be helpful to you and your organization as it applies to today's environment. So the top five reports we're gonna talk about today are the accrual report, the expense entry analysis by expense type, the employee details report, the workflow cycle times details, and then lastly, the build transaction reconciliation report. Now, the first report that we're gonna talk about today is the accrual report, and it's located in the standard reports in the accrual folder. It's the top report, and what this report does is it gives you visibility into those outstanding liabilities. And it's a really a better way for you to manage that cash flow and ensure a timely submission. So again, that accrual report is really utilized to look at those outstanding liabilities because many employees are not traveling today, even though they, as they were with air, hotels, or car rentals, that spending has definitely shifted in other areas. So this report's really helpful because it looks at those purchases online, for example, such as office expenditures. This report is excellent for you to review. This as many items are now being expensed that may not have been before. And then this is also a great report just to really look and ensure that employees are submitting those reports in a very timely manner. They may not be aware of those policies or processes that you have in place with your organization. So this report definitely encourages that. Now, this report also can be uh, looking at the, the statuses because you're going to consider that these reports or this information is looking at those expenses or those expense reports that haven't been submitted or they're submitted in pending approval or they're in accounting review. So again, this report definitely encourages you to look at those outstanding liabilities and what has not been sent for payment and really encourage those uh, employees to submit those expense reports. Now, if we look at the detail of the accrual report, what we're going to see there is first the approval status. And what that means is, is this is looking at those re expense reports that are not submitted or they've been submitted and they're pending approval. And it's also looking at to the left who that employee is and what kind of payment type they have. Now, if there is a report that has been created, it will give you that report name. It'll give you the date of when that report was submitted, who the vendor was, the transaction date, the country, and that posted amount. So again, these are the reports that have not been sent for payment. So this is a great report, again, to look at those outstanding costs. And again, this report can change day to day as expense reports are approved and accounted for. And it's really encouraged to use by accountants on a month end basis just to look and see what is still outstanding. So again, this is a wonderful report just to look at those outstanding liabilities that we encourage you to run. Now the next report that we have available here is the expense entry analysis report. 
The expense entry analysis report is located under your public folders under the standard reports, and then it's gonna be in the expense processing folder. Now, if you're really wanting to see a more detailed report about your company's spend, this is the master of all spend reports that we highly encourage that you run. Now, you'll see here below that there's three different types. There's the expense entry analysis, and then you see the expense entry analysis grouped by employee. But we're going to focus on the expense entry analysis grouped by expense type. All these reports are very similar, but this just gives you the grouping by expense type. Now, this gives you a great amount of detail related to spend by that particular expense type, and it can also be grouped to look at the employees as well. Now, this report gives you a lot of information to determine where those trends are occurring. So, for example, if you want to analyze this report and look and see it for a particular expense type, if you're seeing an increase in spend, this is a wonderful report to utilize. Now, this report does have a lot of versatility because you can add custom fields such as the company code or department and really use this data and this information to drive and influence spend of individual employees. So again, now that employees are working from home, you may see different or an increase in certain expense type spend. And this report definitely gives you that visibility into that overall spend that is occurring. Now, I wanted to show you here is some detail into this report. Now, what we're going to see in this expense entry analysis grouped by expense type, you'll see that the first column here is grouped by the expense type, for example, airfare. The next you'll see in the column is going to be for the employee, and that's sent for payment date of when that report was paid. Then you'll see the report name, the transaction date, the payment type, the vendor, and then that approved amount. So this, again, gives you a closer look at that spend by expense type, but also for each employee. And so, again, it does give you a total at the very bottom. And, again, we encourage that you use this report to look and track that for that spend. And, again, this report does have the ability to be modified to be set up on a schedule. So you could receive it on a weekly or monthly basis just to keep consistent review. Now, the next report that we're going to look at is the employee details report. The employee details report is very helpful because it gives you the opportunity to review the employee data, data that's associated with their profile. And you can also review those active and inactive employees. Now that there's many changes in our organization today, this is an excellent report to review and just keep up, continue to keep updated on who's active and who's non-active or if the employee's department or cost center has changed within their profile, you'll be able to track that information. This report does have the ability to be set up on a schedule, so it is very helpful when you want to run this report on a consistent basis. Now, as we look at the details of the employee details report, we're gonna see here that we have the employee name, and then we're gonna have that employee ID, and we're gonna have their email address and it's gonna include their country that's associated in their profile. What I think is really helpful here is we're all gonna see, also see the information for their default expense approver. And then also over here to the right, we're gonna see that information for the BI manager. Now this is gonna be very helpful if there's been any changes or updates, then you'll also be able to see that information also of any custom fields that are associated within their profile. So again, we encourage you to run this report on a, a, a consistent basis just to keep updated with those changes. Now, the next report that we're going to look at is the workflow cycle times by processor report. Now, this report is located in the standard reports under the expense processing folder. And as you see, if you go a little bit further down, we're gonna see this report and where it's located. And the purpose of this report is to look at the, the time it took that report to go through those major workflow steps. And it's also gonna give you the processor name, and then it also gives you that clickable drill through feature, which gives you additional information. So again, even though you may not be in the office, you do have the visibility to see what your processors or your managers are actively approving. So this can give you a nice snapshot just to see how long those processors are approving reports, because I know that there's been definitely a change in the environment that we're all working in. 
Now, the output of this report, once we run it, this is what the information is going to look like. Now, the first picture we're going to see is I ran this report from January of 2017 to 2020. So it's a pretty large date range, but it gives me a lot of information. And what we'll see here is we're going to see the processor name, and then we're going to see that report count. And then we're going to see the approved amount for the reports that they've approved. And then we're going to see those entries, the number of exceptions, and then the average days that it took to process those reports. Now, this gives us a lot of great information, and if we go a little bit further down, we'll see that admin Karen below, we might need to do a little bit more investigation as we see that there's 32 reports that, that have been uh, processed, and then we have that total amount, but we may look at those number of entries, but then there's a high amount of exceptions. So again, this gives us the opportunity to look a little bit further if we need to into a little bit more detail of where those exceptions may be occurring. Now, as we want to click on and find out a little bit more detail about that processor, we can go and open up the blue link and it's going to give us a lot of information about the processor and what they have processed. We'll see that they have their name to the left and then we're going to have the employee and the report name and report ID. We're going to see when that report was created, when it was submitted. And then if we go over here, it's going to give us the entries, the number of exceptions within that report. And then we'll also see the submission days, which gives us the idea of or a snapshot of when the report was created to the time it was submitted. And then it's also going to give us the approval days. So it gives us a nice idea of how long it took to go through and approve that report. And if we look farther to the right, we'll also see the approval flow information as well. So again, this is a very, very helpful report just to see how it went through those major workflow steps. Now, lastly, we're going to talk about the Build Transaction Reconciliation Report. And this report is located in the Administration folder. And if we go a little bit further down, we're going to see the Build Transaction Reconciliation Detail Report. Now, this report's very helpful because it gives us information about that report count activity. It also gives us the opportunity to capture that data on a month-to-month -month basis. If we look at the detail of this report, we're going to see that we can run it and it will give us the year and the quarter. It's also going to give us the month of when that date was, when the date wage range of the report information was run. We'll also see when the report was submitted, who, who submitted that report, who that employee was. And then we're also going to see the report ID if we go over to the right. And then if it was deleted and if that report was deleted, if it had a date. Now, this is very helpful because if you do have a policy that um, employees are, are going to submit reports once every two weeks, but you find employees submitting reports every week, that might be an opportunity for training. Or if you see that they're deleting a large number of reports, that could be an opportunity to have training as well because your organization has a certain count or number set up of the number of reports submitted, whether it's on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis. So again, this is a great report to review and analyze that information. Now, lastly, I wanted to give you a reference that would give you additional information if you'd like to learn more about analysis and reporting, and you can use this link here that's listed. And what this information will give you is if you look to the top left here, you're going to see information about the analysis. There's going to be a download that you can, which will provide information. It gives you information as far as on how to create folders and also for scheduling and then navigating through the analysis platform. And then to the right, we're also going to see that there's some recorded trainings that are available for analysis if you'd like to learn more about how to, to uh, build reports in Query Studio. And then below at the very bottom, if you look at the pre-built reporting catalog, you can select this and download, and it will give you all the reports that are available within the standard reports folder. And since there's over 100 uh, reports that are available, this is a great document to download and utilize so you'll be able to navigate through those reports and look through the different folders very easily. I wanted to thank you again today for joining us for five and 15 minutes for the reports that we've reviewed and hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. If you would like to check out additional resources available on the Timely Topics Education page, please be sure to click through the link that can be found in the resources widget. 
And as a final reminder, please be sure to complete the survey before you go. Thanks so much for joining us.